Am I audible? Great. So in the last session, we have seen how to create a jar file, executable jar file. And in session, I asked about the people who are using a Windows computer should, shall try to create a batch file uh, and a desktop icon using which they will be able to execute the file. And uh, for the Linux people, they should try to create a shell file yeah, using which they will be able to execute the jar file as an uh, application directly. Uh, in this session, we are going to check uh, something called as a nested classes in Java. And if type formats, we will start with the exception. So I'm not going to show you how to do it. Just I'll show you what will be the effect if you, uh, uh, at the start of the lecture, if you have, if you successfully manage to create a batch file, I will show you what will be the effect. And I'll expect the same thing that you will be able to do it. If uh, else, uh, we have a laboratory session today evening in which I will be answering your doubts regarding the assignments. Uh, in that session, you can ask me the question and we will uh, try to answer. If you are facing some problem, trouble, uh, you can raise the question and we will answer that question. Other students will be able to answer the same thing. Uh, I'll encourage, in fact, everyone to participate in the lab session, right? So let me share my screen. Is screen visible? Okay, great. Uh, we were in the demo file. Just let me uh, share how, if you successfully manage to deploy a, a batch file as an icon and uh, uh, see the jar file that I've, that we created in the last session that I've, what I've done is I've copied that jar file in my D drive. So here is that uh, demo.jar file that we created in the last session. And uh, the one extra change I've done is uh, for the demo purpose, I've added a frame inside it. Uh, so for a matter of this session, just ignore what is a frame because we will see what is a frame uh, uh, just immediately after we will finish with the exceptions and IO streams. So what I've done is in the same uh, file, I've added a frame. Now, if I click on this batch file, which is on my desktop right here, A, if I click on this, the application start executing. And here you, on the command prompt, you can see that this is the exact output of the program that we have uh, done that we have seen during our uh, last session, right? So this is the output of the program, and this is the frame that I have added to the jar file. So if you manage to have, a, if you manage to get a jar file uh, and a batch file for that, just you need to click on that particular icon, batch icon, and the application will automatically start executing. So that is what is expected from uh, client's perspective, like you have to provide him a single icon, user icon on which if the client clicks, the application will start automatically working. The batch file is for the Windows, for the Linux, we have to create a shell script for Mac, I guess the shell script will work too, right? So uh, that we have to do. Uh, now, why the frame is added? Uh, there is one point to be noted here that if I uh, just remove this frame from the program, the application won't show the output. For example, what will happen is the command prompt will open up immediately and it will immediately close. So even if you manage to create a successful uh, batch file, you have to put a system not like, suppose, uh, let me go to the, terminal job, yes. Now let me open up a command prompt. So let's uh, sorry, let's go to the our uh, program directory. Nice the project ID, I Java demo, and we were having a dot Java file was our main program, right? 
here you can see that there is something called as a D frame, which I have added and I'm creating the object of D frame. If I remove this content, what will happen is the program will execute and the command prompt will terminate immediately. What I recommend is you people put a, a read line, like suppose you have a scanner object called as SC, then SC dot next. Now this line will make sure that your command prompt stays up after displaying all the output as it is expecting an input from the keyboard and it won't just uh, quit. If you don't add this line, what will happen is uh, even if you manage to create a successful batch file, you click on the batch file, the application, you will see that the immediate black window of a command prompt is getting opened, something is getting displayed and the window gets closed immediately. Because the application has done its part of execution and there is nothing to execute, so the application terminates. So to make sure that the application keeps on running, make sure that the application's last line is accepting the input. So in your program, when you are they are, when you are trying to create this uh, package and then the batch file, make sure that in the main class, main method, the last line is reading from a keyboard, right? So what will happen is when you'll execute the application, because of this last uh, dc dot next line, the application will keep on running, right? Otherwise, you can go and check this how to create a swing frame. I will not recommend this. We will see how to create a frames and uh, UI in Java environment uh, during the fourth unit, right? So right now you are very well aware about what is a scanner class and how to read from a keyboard. So I'll recommend that you try this and the application will work. Okay. So uh, let's start with the next concept. So let's first of all understand what do you mean by an STD class. For that, I'll make use of a paint. I can use a whiteboard, but I'll prefer paint. Let's say that you have created a class. You have uh, written a code for a class in Java. Let's say, let's say this class is called as E, right? So what I'll do is I'll call this, this class is called as E, E class. Now, in the definition of this A class, what is the meaning of a definition? The code that is between the opening bracket and the closing bracket of a class A, right? So if within the definition of a class A, if you define another class, right? Now I'll write, I'll call this class as class B. Let's say this is class B. So whether it is going to work in Java or not, that is the question. Now, if you have such scenario, then we call this class as a subclass or a nested class in Java. So B is a nested inside A. B is nested inside A. And we call this B as a subclass of A or a nested class of A. There are two variants uh, using which we can add a class inside a class. So first of all, what do you mean by nested class or a you know, subclass? the class which is enclosed in the definition of the other class. Here, A's definition encloses class B. So we call B as a nested class under A, right? Now there are two ways in which we can create this nested classes, right? So how uh, the first, like for example, for example, what do you mean by uh, having two ways in which we can create this nested class? Let me uh, write a definition of class A in notepad hmm. or let me write here itself again again i'll use the same story uh, go to home let me write here integer key now see this is the definition of class a this is the definition of class a that means here we are opening the curly bracket of class a and after this key we are closing the curly bracket of class a right so whatever is enclosed between this opening and closing bracket, that is a part of class A. And what is a class B? Class B here, again, class B's definition start. And here, let's say class B's definition ends. So that is a class inside a class. 
class inside a class. But here, this integer k, whatever we have called as an integer k, this int k, and this class b, they are at the same level. What do you what do I mean by calling it as the same level? If I draw a tree here, let's say this is the vertical line representing the entities inside A, and I'll call this as A A class, right? Now this inside this A class, there are two entities. The first entity is let me write the entity here. The first entity is class B, right? So the class B is the first entity. And let me use the second horizontal line to represent the second entity, which is integer k. Now look at this. This integer k and integer b are members of class A. So in this perspective, I am saying that k and b are at same level for class A. Now we know that we can define this k in variety of ways. Variety of ways in which we can uh, provide the meaning to this k. What I really mean by that is, uh, I can make this k variable as static. Like I can make it as static variable, right? Or right now this k is non-static, k is non-static. So in the similar way, the static keyword can be applied to this, to this class. The static keyword can be applied to this class. So if I make this class be static, then we call it as a static nested class or in short, sometimes nested class. And right now this class B is not declared as static. So in this case, I call this class B as an inner class. So here everyone must understand the preference, uh, whatever what we can say, uh, the preferred wording used by Java community while dealing with the nested classes. Let me use a, another diagram. First of all, anyone have a doubt? You can raise your hand in, so I'll be able to see you have a doubt and you can ask your question in the chat box. If there is no hand raised, I'll continue with the session. Any doubt? Okay, so no hand raised, great. So it means that most of the people are clear with what we are going through. So let's start. Now let me use another diagram. Now this time, what I'll do is, let's say this is class E. This is class A and it's opening bracket. And the class A ends at the bottom. So let me put a closing curly bracket. So this is class A's definition. Inside the class A, you are defining another class. Let me call this class as class B, which starts here. And the class B will end here, right? And again, let me write a new class. This time I'll add a word called as static class C and put opening bracket and then a closing bracket. Oh, sorry. And then the closing bracket. Now you can see that the class itself is of two types. First one, we are calling it as a plain class B which is a member of class A, nested class, and static class C, which is again a member of uh, class A, right? So this class B and class C, both are nested inside class A. So we call them as nested classes. We call them as nested classes, no doubt in that. But Java community have preferred to differentiate between these two classes while putting out a technical discussion or while writing a documentation. How they differ is they call this class B as an inner class. So this is called as an inner class in Java. Sorry. So this is called as an inner class in Java, right? And this one, the static class C, this is called as a nested class. This is called as a 
nested class and as this both classes are nested inside k a people call this sometime as static nested class static nested class so keep it in the mind that whenever you people hear only nested class in the technical discussion that means that most probably the person is talking about static class very specific pronunciation of this classes uh, c classes static nested class whereas class b 100% of the time you will find that the people will refer the word only as inner class so they will call b as a inner class so as soon as you hear the term b is a inner class it means b is declared as a plain class and not as a static class b right so as soon as you hear the word inner class b it means it is nested inside a and it is not declared as static but if you hear the word nested class 95 or more of the time most of the time or the i uh, there is a great probability that 95% let's say 95% of the time literature documentation the technical documentation the person whom with you are you uh, you are interacting with is talking about static class which is a in nested inside some other class right and to be very specific if they really want to make a difference the people will pronounce this class c as static nested class any doubt in this session in whatever we have discussed you can raise hand i'll be able to see this if anyone have a doubt okay no one have a doubt so let's immediately create a inner class as well as a nested class now what do you mean by what i mean by nested class the class which is declared as static and what i mean by inner class simply the class which is nested inside a but it is not declared as static by keeping this theory in mind let's start creating the nested classes in java so let i'm not going to save this so notepad let me call it as uh, post dot java again and let's say this is the a class right and or rather that's fine what what second difference i'll make is i will put my main method class as in a separate class class first right and then we can have class b here now this b is a inner class right and now we have to access the members of this class b for just for the understanding purpose i will put another variable called as a k now this k and class b are at the same level are at the same level now to have something under execution i'll just put a line called as print ln and i'll say this is main of first class right and after displaying this line i will go on creating the object of class a let's call it as a's object new a so a's object is created a obj is the variable name that we are using now using this a object you are able to call key right and even you are able to print the value of this key variable right you can say a object dot key it will print the value of this key variable so 
it is working. Now, how to access this class B? First of all, there is nothing inside this class. So even if you access it, what are you going to do about it? So let's add something inside inside it. So let me add integer uh, ID. All ID will do, do the job. And for the sake of simplicity, I will initialize it to one. And we know that it is a member of a class A, a class B. So if, if you are not going to initialize it, it's going to have a default value and which is one. And we have discussed, sorry, not one, zero, based on its numeric type. And we have discussed this in the earlier session, right? So even if I'm not going to put this, it is going to have a default value as zero. Now you want to access this ID variable, right? You want to access this ID variable in the main method of class first. How to do it? As K can be accessed directly with the object as K is a member of class A, but ID is a member of class B and you want to access this ID variable and it is inside class B. To go to the ID variable, first you have to reach to the variable class A. From inside class A, you have to reach to the class B. And if you reach to the class B, then you have to create the object of class B and then you will be able to access it. Now here we have to make few things very clear. If I try to access this K variable directly by saying A dot K, and if I, as I try to assign a value, this line is going to create an error. And we know that this line, why this line is going to create an error. As K is a non-static member of a class, we 100% need object of class A to access K, to access variable K, right? So when I need the object of cla that uh, class to access the K variable, it means that we also need a way object of class A to access this class B, right? You can't access this class B by saying A dot B dot ID. It is not going to work, right? So how Java syntaxing, uh, syntax styling has preferred to solve this problem? See, here the concept is like you have to use object of A to reach class B and class B, uh, B is itself is a class. So you again have to create an object of class B to reach out ID variable, right? And uh, this is a syntaxing style of Java that I'm going to show you. There will be minor changes as soon as you change the platform. For example, if you switch to C sharp platform, there will be minor difference in how the syntax has been preferred by C sharp. But the overall concept is very same. So how the Java language decides to handle it, it says that, okay, A is a class. So this is how we create an object of A. So we mention the class name. But here we are not interested in creating the object of class A, a which object of class A is already created. We are interested in creating object of class B. So what I'll write is A dot B. So when I write A dot B, when I write A dot B while creating the object, that means I have reached out to the class B, right? Now I will specify the name of the object that I want to create. So I'll say B's object, B's object, B O B J, B O B J. Now here comes the assignment statement that we use. And then we say that new, and we have to specify the name of the class against which we want to create the object. So here Java says that you can use now only B or specify the name of the class whose object you want to create. So this part is same. We want to use new, we want to use B, which is the class. Where to find B? B is to be found inside A. So A dot B, name of the variable, new, B. But here is one trick. Here is one trick. Let's discuss it. Let's say you have another object of A called as A OBJ2, A OBJ2 and you say A, A OBJ2 and new A. Now we all know that A OBJ2 dot, uh, 
dot k is equal to 22. So this k variable is a member of object 2 and this k variable is a member of object a object or object 1 right. So this both k variables are totally independent totally independent in the same style in the same style this obj variable has to be created inside object has to be created inside object because this is a at same level of k so whenever you want to refer k from object the same style has to be applied to the whenever you want to access this class b so what we have to do is this the object of b is going to live inside object of a let me use notepad sorry not notepad let me use paint to clear out the diagram so this is our scenario this is the scenario right so let's say that i have created object of a so this is the object of a now inside this object there are two living entities one is k and then there is class b right there is class b so the b is class so if you want to use this b id variable which is inside b again you have to create object of b right so let me create object of b so i'll say this becomes the object of b and now inside this object of b you have a variable called as id look at this look at this so what you have is inside the object you have a variable k inside this object you have object of class b and this object of class b have a variable id right and as this b is a class you can create n number of objects of it so what you can do is you can add one more object of class b you can add another object of class b so it is called as this subclass or this nested class objects are going to live inside the object of the outer class so a is also called as the outer class or the master class or the a class or the enclosing class right so there are different wordings used by the documentation let me here use the word as outer class so a is outer class so this outer class object this outer class object is supposed to contain all the objects of inner class so whenever you create an object of inner class it will be contained inside a outer class object it will be contained inside a outer class object as on theoretical part like variable k this first object second object and third object are also members of this object of class a now to follow this hierarchy we have to modify the syntax that we are using while creating the object right what i have to use here is i have to use a object dot new a object dot new now, as soon as i use this line a object dot new what it means is what it means is you are inside of object of a so let's call this as a obj a obj this is object of a class inside this class because of this statement a obj dot new inside this you want to allocate a new memory and this new memory is of type b is of type b and where to find b it is also inside class available so i'll call this as b obj obj right so this is my first object but i can change the variable name so i let me copy this line let me copy this line control c go to the next line paste it paste inside it and let me call it as a obj 2 not sorry not here b object 2 so because of this what happened see everything is same just you are changing the variable name that means you are creating the another object let me create another object so if i put the second object here 
and if I say B, oh sorry, let me select this B O B B O B Z two. Now you are able to see what I mean. So we have created a second object inside the parent object. Now if I keep on doing this, if I keep on doing this, let me create the third line. And let me call this as a third object. Again, what I can do is, again, I can go to the home and select the new object and put it here. Put it here and let me call this as B O B J 3. So, logically, this story will start happening. And lastly, if I keep on doing this, if I keep on doing this, you can end up with, you can end up with having, let's say, B O B J N, N number of objects you will be able to create. Now somebody asked me, somebody may have a doubt that, sir, this is a limited circle boundary of AOBJ. How many objects you can fit in? So here you have to focus on this keyword new. And from C++, we know that this new keyword means you are reserving a fresh memory. It is like analog or C analog from or realog from C++ or from C environment. So this new always engages a new memory and returns the address of it. So you are you have a plenty of memory to store this variable inside object. So anyone have a doubt? Immediately post the question in the chat box if you have a doubt. If you are clear, uh, type on quick responses in the chat window as yes. If you don't have a doubt, is everything clear? Yes, great. Nice to see that most of the answers are coming as yes, not. So let's try to execute it now. So let me, I am not interested in saving this diagram because we will create it again when required. So I will not save it. Now what we will do is bobj3.id is equal to 3 bobj2 dot id is equal to 2 and we will print this two variables system dot out dot print ln and now i'll be able to print these variables on the screen b o b j 3 dot id and on the similar basis or on the similar grounds just let's copy the line and instead of i'll use two and again i'll use one also uh, one is not there, um, simple OB, B O B J. So let's see whether the program works or not. So the program is saved. Java C first dot Java. Java first. And you can see that all the three IDs are listed. First, the ID of three, which we have set to three. The ID of two, we have set it to two. And the ID of default value, which is assigned, while creating the object one so the everything is printed on the screen right so this is the this class is called as inner class right so quick pool is coming
Poll is opened. You have one minute to answer. So the results are here. See, most of the students have got a correct answer. Like uh, B is what is the expected answer. So. 60% of the student have got a pinpointed correct answer. 19 student mark the option as a nested class, but I say that yes, nested class, uh, this B is a, also called as a nested class, but people don't use this term for the class B. They strictly use term inner class when they want to specify the class, which is non-static, right? So in the inner class, the people who answered the, uh, or who have opted for the class B, uh, that inner class answer, option b they will get suppose i have to distribute it in percentage the 100 percent marks will be allocated to the people who have selected inner class option people who selected the a option will get 20 or 30 percent marks so if i have to grade it out of 10 you will get two or three marks for your answer the people who selected subclass they will also get 10 or, or 20 marks right and 20 people 21 people have not selected any option Right, don't know whether they are present in the session or they are absent. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's say 60% of the class have got the concept completely, and a 20% of the class need to understand it again. Right. So let's further proceed with whatever we are doing or in a class concept. And now let's start with something called as a nested class. Now let me choose the word nested class All right let me save this and what we will do is now i'll use word static and then i'll call it as class c right now look at the word static and we know that if you add word static then you no longer need an object of that class to call it to access it right so as soon as a becomes static sorry that c becomes static you do, really do not need to create object of class a to access this class c you just you can create this uh, or you can access this class c by simply specifying the name of the class now how we can proceed is let me write this code at the top of the main method or after displaying just this is main option here if i want to access class c what i have to do just is class c but remember again this is a class so to access anything inside it you may need an object of it now here i am using the word you may need an object of it right so let me explore one typical case let me say that uh, let me put a variable let me put a variable static int g now look at this variable again the variable is declared as static right you the variable itself is declared as static and we know that if 
something is declared as static, then you do not need to create object of the class to access it. So a dot c dot g. Let me put that 11. And then now let me try to compile the program. So it worked. And I'll say system dot out dot println. And let me write a dot c dot j. And again, let's compile this. And you can see the 11 is displayed in the output, right? So a very simple story, very simple story, right? So static classes or a nested class. Remember, I'll repeat the line. It is an inner class. Better always refer this class as an inner class. B class is an inner class, right? And we call this classes as nested classes or even sometimes as static nested class. So whenever you hear the word nested class, it is good probably that, probability that the person is talking about static nested class. And whenever you hear the word inner class, 100% the person is talking about talking about class B, right? So keep that in mind. Now it looks very simple now. The static class, there is nothing like you have to put a outer class dot, the nested class dot, the thing that you want to access. So here outer class is A dot the nested class is C dot what I want to access is J is equal to the assignment value. Or if I want to print it, A dot C dot J, it will print the value. Now is the story really simple? Don't, now I'm going to do something which might confuse you. Just don't get confused. You have to keep only one thing in the mind that this is the class. This is the class, right? If say you get confused somehow in anything, what you have to do is, if let's say you are confused about this class B, then assume there is nothing. This class B is completely a plain class, right? So let me copy, use a new file, blank file. This class B is declared like this. Assume this is class B. Now your confusions will be gone because you already have a command on this plain class, right? So when anywhere, anytime, whenever you get confused how this class works, you copy the definition of this class and put it in a blank file and the things will start getting clear to you. Now you already know how to create the object of this inner, inner class, right? So you have to just create the object and deal with whatever you want to deal with. So it is that simple. Now let me open up our main program uh, desktop. Okay, fine. So this is the program. Now, why why I use this word that you may get confused is I'm going to write something inside this. And what I'm going to write is public, fine, and you are giving a public access. Static, of course, don't need object to call it. Void, I don't want to return. So of course, this means that I'm adding a method. Mean, right? Then let me, complete the syntax of main and let me use the line system dot out dot print ln this is main method of class c right now if somebody gets confused about this as i suggested copy this code put it in a blank file and things get clear. Things get clear, right? So let's not get confused. Now let me try to compile this class C, sorry, clear CLS, Java C first dot Java, and the program compiles. Now if I look at the content of the directory, if I look at the content of the directory, you will find something is called as a dollar b is created and a dollar c is also created also we have a dot class and first dot class and we know that our main method is inside first class so if i say if i say java first this will execute the main method of first class but by looking at the program we also know that now this class c also contains a main method class c also contains a main method 
and how we can locate a class c it is inside class a it is nested inside class a so a dollar c is the class file created for class c now what if i do it like this Java a dollar c will it execute the main method let's try and here you can see the output as this is the main method of class c let's make it even complicated Let's make it worse. Let's make it horrible. And let's make it never do it like. And now you know what I mean. This everything is possible in Java. Whatever I've run, whatever I've written, this all things are possible in Java, right? So it's up to you how you really want to exploit this theory of nested classes. How you, re you really want to exploit this theory of nested classes. It will give you all the liberty, right? Let me remove this. Let me remove this. And now let's do one more thing. A dot C dot mean, it's the method. So you should be able to call it A dot C dot mean. You should be able to call it from the first, right? But there is one peculiar point, like this main method is accepting an array of type string. So input or the argument or the parameter to this main method is string array. So what I can do is I can utilize my main method of first class ARGS and I can pass here simply ARGS as an argument. Now let me try to compile Java C first dot Java program compiles and now I will use Java first. And now the both main methods will execute. First, it will execute the main method of class first, and then we are calling the main method of class C in the first, that will also execute. So class first, enter. So here you can see the main method of class first, then the main method of class C, and then whatever we are doing, right? So there is a limitless possibility. There is, there is no limit on how much hierarchy you want to create, how many inner classes hierarchy you want, how you want to twist with the inner class and nested class, you can do all the possible combinations that are allowed by Java. Try to keep them as simple as possible. Specifically, when we use inner class, you will better understand when we'll start exploring about application creating, uh, creating applications using uh, UI, Java user interfaces. Like, uh, for example, let's say you want to create a editor or you want to create a calculator or you want to create a frame in which a TCP IP client server communication is going on. You want to create a chatting application. If you are, if you are doing such a kind of such a programs, then the situation will soon come that the inner class or a nested class is the best answer to your question of how to do it, right? So soon you people are going to have a question in mind that how to solve the particular problem. So the situations are going to come when inner classes or the nested classes are the only answers or not only answers are the best answers using which you can solve the particular problem. Fine. So remember that guys, you're going to soon need the help of this kind of environment to write the optimized program in Java. If anyone have a doubt, immediately hand raises okay there is something in chat everyone okay is there any question yeah neil zoshi i didn't understand how to access the nested class variable uh neil have i shown you how to access it i guess i showed you right everyone neil are you there okay neil answer is yes 
Then the next question from Vaishnavi is, uh, sir, if class is static and the variable is not static, then do we need to create objects? Okay, that is a, a nice question. I was avoiding this discussion for this particular session. Let me show you. Now, what do you think? What should happen? What should happen? Oh, okay, K is the recurring name. I have to uh, use a name. Let's call it as a, let me call it as, uh, I'm calling the variable itself as an error, right? I'm calling the variable itself as an error. Now, this is the only change that I've made in my program. Now, there is a reason why I've uh, called this variable as an error. By the way, uh, error means doesn't mean everything with the compilation, right? Keep this in mind. We are going to talk about it immediately when we we'll start with uh, exception handling. Now, let me compile this, right? And have I saved the file? Now, I want to access this integer key variable, right? Int key variable, int error variable. Let me let me use this now we we know how to locate the c whether this is a static or non-static this is non-static so what you need definitely you need a object right so let me create an object of this called it as a dot c right and then these object new a dot c remember this is uh, c can you see the difference this is the syntax that we are using for the inner class. And this is the one that I'll prefer for the nested class. And the reason is very simple. Why I'm using this one? As I discussed in many, let me open up a paint again. Let me open up a paint again. Um, let me use a block. And let's say that we have created an object of class A. Let's say that we have created an object of class A, right? And too big. Let me create an object of class A and one more object of class A and another object of class A. So let's say we have four objects of class A. We have four objects of class A. And let me make this k variable static. So as soon as you make a variable static, we have we know that this k variable will be from class. This will not be from this will not be from the object. The variable key here will be from class. And this all instances will share the same copy. This all instances will share the same copy, right? So the value of key will be common for all objects. So in the same style, this class C is a static class. So you do not need object of A with the new, whereas the B was an inner class, and inner class means every object is going to have its own independent copy. So you need object of A. Here, you don't need object of A because C is static. Now, simply what we can do is C object dot, what was the variable? Error is the variable name that I've used. 11. And now 11, I've already used. Let me use value as 12. And now let's try to display. Print alarm. OBJ dot error. So let's compile and let's execute. Here you can see the 12 inch on the screen. So you get the value on the screen. Fine. So have I answered the question? Vaishnavi, have I answered your question? Great. Now here with one, one intentional uh, reason, I've used this variable as error, huh? this variable as error. Let me show you. Now, as soon as you start doing this, the void data method you can access it without creating a uh, you have to create an object of class c but you don't need object of class e to access it right let's try to do it same with the class c class b sorry let me use static integer error one uh -huh. and now can you see the error one is actually error at a compile time Compile time and I a uh, minute ago I said that 
error is the word that I am not using only for the compilation error. Error is going to come in the runtime also. And immediately we are going to see the types of errors in Java, which are under a library called as java.lang, which is the package. Under this package, there is a class called as throwable. And from this throwable class, there are types of exception under which one exception type is also called as an error. Right? One exception type is also called as an error. So we'll see that. And there is a question from Aditya uh, why we create the object as c dot a dot c. Right? Let me answer this first. Let me remove this error line. A dot c. So here is the question, right? This is the question that you're asking me. Aditya? Aditya, are you there? Okay. Fine. So <coughs> what Java says is when you people are creating an object of B, which is an inner class, which is a inner class, you are taking a help of the object of A. And so you can locate this class B. Why it, why this syntax is preferred? Because as class B is a non-static entity, let me add one non-static entity integer. Uh, let me add one non-static entity here, integer ID. To access this ID, you need object of A. In the same way, what Java says is that as this class B is not a static member, to access this class B, it makes it compulsory to have an object of A. So it prefers the syntax as A's object dot new and then the class name, right? Whereas the class C is a static and you do not really need object of class C to access the class C. So in that case, Java has preferred this syntax like a dot C located the class. You want to create object of it, new object, and again a dot C. So here, this would have worked if Java would have permitted. But Java preferred the syntax of saying a dot C. Why they why they preferred the syntax of saying a dot C? Here, while creating the object of inner class, they are preferring object of class A because making sure that through the syntax itself, the Java is making clear that this B is residing the, inside the object of A. And here through syntax, Java wants to make clear that this object COBJ is totally independent of object of A. So you do not really need object of A. So that's they want to make it clear. Although this would have also worked. Have I answered Aditya? Great. So it's 10 1. In the next section, we should start with uh, exception handling. You can end this meeting and you can join next session. Thank you. Let's see you in the next session.